Hey folks, I'm Rob Franick. I'm Editor-in-Chief here at The Prince Review, and today we are continuing our series on the digital SAT. In short, the digital SAT is a huge deal. The changes have been in the works for the digital SAT for a full two years' time. And let's remember it's the College Board, the creators of all things SAT, that created this largest overhaul of this test in 40 years' time. So today, we are sharing our essential tips, three do's and two don'ts for taking that digital SAT. And I'm gonna say this part out loud. Whether you're taking the first digital SAT to be administered here in the U.S. come March, or one of the later testing administrations down the road, these tips that I'm walking you through today are tailored just for you, no matter the administration of the test that you choose to take. But first, we are going to focus on three basics. I know you know these things already, but three basics on the digital SAT itself. Number one on my list, it's um, being given digitally, obviously. It's gonna be given in person, in a proctored environment, in an SAT testing location, either using a computer or a tablet distributed at that location or on your very own laptop or tablet should you prefer. Important to note, uh, let's check out the College Board's website for details on which digital devices are approved for taking the digital SAT and how to set up that device well before exam day. Of course, I put a link uh, to that specific section on the College Board's website in the info card below. Number two on the list, the digital SAT is an adaptive test. Simply put, that means how you answer some questions determines the difficulty level on successive questions on the digital SAT. No one will get the exact same test. They're like snowflakes, they're all perfectly unique. Number three and last on this quick review, the digital SAT is a near full hour shorter than its previous incarnation in pencil and paper. The old SAT was three hours, and the new digital SAT comes in at a slim two hours and 14 minutes. Um, we, of course, here at the Princeton Review have done our homework on the digital SAT over these last two years' time, and we are certainly ready to help you crush this test. Whether it's courses, or books, or website, or social, and everything in between, we feature a ton of strategies and techniques and practice resources for taking that new digital test. All of those links are fully in the digital, uh, pardon me, in the info card below. Now, to our five essential tips on the digital SAT. Again, three do's and two don'ts. We, of course, link to the positive, so I'm gonna start with the do's. Number one on my list, do get friendly with the test before you take it, ideally well before you take it. To that end, take a full-length practice digital SAT. Take two, take three, take more. You can do this for free on our website. Once you complete that test, you'll get a score report that shows the areas that you did best on and which areas you need to focus your test prep and practice on. Also, uh, download the College Board's Blue Book app. You can download it from the College Board's website as well as from the Apple or Android app stores. Um, this will help you get familiar with the specifics of the digital SAT when it comes to the testing environment. Get comfortable with the directions for each module. Get comfortable with each direction for each section. This is deeply important for the digital SAT. And while you're there practicing, practice using the digital SAT testing tools. There are three that you should keep up in your head. Uh, number one, the highlighting tool. Number two, the reference sheet. And number three, the tests built-in Desmos calculator. And please, please, please be sure to be nimble uh, in your ability to use that Desmos calculator. Also remember that you may choose to bring your own calculator to the test. Check out the College Board's website to be sure that the calculator model is acceptable for the digital SAT. I'll put that link in the info card below as well. Now, uh, this is all supremely important uh, as you don't want to lose any precious moments on the test being surprised about any aspect of the testing environment that you're taking that test in. Number two, do on my list. Do make sure uh, to make that test your own within each module of the test, whether it's the reading or writing module or the math module. You can skip around based on your own order of difficulty, uh, which you can learn by taking practice tests and getting score reports, but be that as it may, um, go to the question types that are easiest for you and bank in as many right answers as you can. Skip over the more difficult ones to return to later. There are two, two incredibly useful tools built into the digital SAT platform that will be very helpful in doing just that. The test has, number one on the list, a mark for review button. It looks just like a little flag. And as its name states, you may use that feature to mark questions for later review. The test also has a question number of number button at the bottom of each screen. 
when you click on it, it'll bring up a review panel that shows which questions you have either answered, left unanswered, or marked for review. Number three, do use POE. That acronym, of course, stands for process of elimination. Now, obviously, if you know the answer to the question, then choose it and move on. But let's say you're unsure, or worse, you are clueless as to what the answer is. Um, be sure that you can use process of elimination to eliminate as many wrong answers as you can to obviously find the right one. Process of elimination is as important on the digital SAT as it was on the pencil and paper SAT. And we have taught our students at the Princeton Review this process of elimination strategy for decades because it works. And we were delighted to see that the College Board, the creators of all things SAT, caught on to the importance of process of elimination, so much so that they added an eliminator tool to the digital SAT that enabled you to cross off answers that appear wrong. Just a couple of quick hints on sleuthing out possible wrong answers in the reading and writing section, in the reading and writing modules. Um, look for answers that present language recycled from the passage, but say something that's off or not true and hence wrong. In the math modules, look for answers that just don't fit the question. That might be a negative number when the question asks for a positive number, or they might be too large a number to be correct or too small. Hence, wrong, wrong, and wrong. And by the way, do use the scratch paper uh, that you will be given at the testing center to work out any of your math questions, as well as to make notes as you complete the reading and writing section on the, tense, uh, on the test. Now, just a uh, housekeeping rule. Uh, pencils will not be provided at this testing center, so make sure you pack a couple in your bag so that you can carry out the scratch paper uh, due diligence. Now, the don'ts on my list, as I said before, there are two of them. Number one on the list, don't leave a question blank. Now, as I've just walked through, if you don't know the right answer, then use process of elimination to try to get to the right one. But let's say you are totally stumped. Then guess, always, 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 did I say always? Always guess, and here's why. There is no scoring penalty for a wrong answer on the SAT. There is no wrong, there's no uh, penalty for a wrong answer on the digital SAT. Any answer you choose will give you better odds of getting it if only by sheer luck than no answers at all. So to clarify, submitting no answers means no points gettable on that question. Moreover, spinning your wheels, fretting over a question will make you lose precious time and points that you might earn on subsequent questions. Now, that math is of course super easy, so be sure to allow time at the end of the te test to zip through any of the questions that you marked for review or that you left unanswered and just choose any random letter choice uh, for that particular answer. Number two, don't on my list and then we'll wrap up. Don't waste time worrying about how well you're doing based on whether the questions seem to be getting easier or seem to be getting harder. Now, it is true that the digital SAT is an adaptive test. In each section, the first module determines the difficulty level of the content that you'll see in the second module. But chances are you won't be able to tell if the second module is tougher or easier, and here's why. Um, the easier module will still have hard content, and the harder module will still have easy content. So, after each module, take a deep breath and start the next one with a clear mind. Bottom line, you'll score better on the digital SAT if you prepare for it, obviously. Number two, get savvy about the testing experience. Number three, pace yourself throughout the test. And number four, never, never, never leave an answer choice blank. And that brings me, of course, to the end of our tips uh, for you come test days. As always, please do know that myself and our full team here at the Princeton Review are right here in your corner. You are going to rock this test. And of course, don't be bashful. If you have a question about the digital SAT or any facet of college admission and testing, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my level best to get back to you. And if you haven't already, please, please, please do subscribe to our channel here at the Princeton Review for the latest information on testing and college admission and financial aid and a whole lot more. Rob Franick, Editor-in-Chief here at the Review signing off for today. Be well.